Hey everybody, welcome back to Coffee Can Creations. My name is Laura and I'm glad that you found my channel today. Welcome to my little corner of the internet. Today I'm gonna to be doing something that's a little new for me. I'm doing a DIY challenge. This challenge, it's called the Pumpkin Decorating Challenge and it's being hosted by Sammy at Unicorn Dust Designs and Corey at Crafted by Corey. If you haven't ever seen their channels, I'll make sure and put the links to their channels in my description box below. They're both two really amazingly talented DIY designers and I know you're gonna love the content that they put out there. I'll also make sure and put a link to the playlist for this challenge so that you can make sure and see the videos of the other participants that participated today. If this is the first time visiting my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe. And if you want to make sure that you never miss one of my videos, just click on that bell and it will notify you every time I upload a new video. So without further ado, we're going to get started and I really hope that you enjoy both of these DIYs. I'm really excited about how they turned out. I think you're really going to like them. So let's just jump in and get started. Hey everybody, so here we go. This is our first project we're gonna do together today uh, using this Thankful and Blessed pumpkin. This has been one of my favorite things that Dollar Tree had this year. I just have been able to do so many different things with this pumpkin. And I did uh, save that little silver leaf because we're gonna use it uh, on part of this project. Uh, so right here, I'm just using my heat gun to try to scrape off all of that hot glue and get the pumpkin ready. And this hot glue, I had a hard time getting this hot glue off this time, but I just worked at it there and used my heat gun and I was finally able to get it all off. I also um, sanded this pumpkin down. I just took my block sander and I just got off all of that glitter that is over the thankful and blessed part of the sign and just smoothed it out so that when I painted over it, um, you couldn't, see any of that um, uh, glitter or any roughness coming through. So here I am, I'm just using the Waverly uh, paint in white and I'm doing um, a coat of paint here. I did end up doing um, two coats of paint to start with and after I did my two coats of paint, I measured every two inches and I drew in lightly with pencil first to make my lines because I'm gonna make this look a uh, shiplap. After I put those lines in with pencil, I went over with my little Micron permanent pen and I went over those lines again. I like using this pen over a Sharpie just because it's a very fine pen and I, I just feel like it looks a little more realistic. I also, as you can see, I went back through on some of those lines and I just, I made like these little, where it gets kind of like thicker in spots just to make the wood a little more uh, realistic. After I went over those with that Sharpie, then I go back through again and I put a third coat of that white Waverly, but I do this coat really lightly. Um, I'm not trying to completely cover those lines, but just mute them a little bit, just to take away a little bit of that Sharpie look. And then I go through with a really firm uh, stencil brush from the Dollar Tree. And I use this Java paint here and I just kind of dry brush over the different slats to make them look like wood. I dry brush kind of with the side of that um, stencil brush over those uh, shiplap lines just to give them, make them a little darker um, and just kind of try to hide again, hide that sharpie look to them and just try to make it look a little more realistic. I just do some brush strokes on each slat and then just go over those lines. Then I'm taking my brush and I'm going around the edges of my pumpkin just to give it, you know, that little more rustic look and um, I just went all the way around it with my stencil brush again. Now I'm just going in and I am painting the top of my stem. And again, I just painted that with that same Java color. I just went in with a little more flat brush on this part and um, colored that in a little bit, colored that in. Oh, I painted it in. And 
And now what I'm doing here is I'm just measuring because I'm going to create a small stencil on my Cricut. And so I was just measuring the size I needed to make it. I took one of the pumpkins off that little football pumpkin holder, sanded it down, and now I am covering it with Mod Podge. Um, I'm going to be putting this um, Buffalo check paper over the top of it. I'm going to Mod Podge that on. Uh, so I just sanded the pumpkin down and then I'm putting a generous amount of Mod Podge on it. I'm going to push that uh, pumpkin down onto the paper. Now I'm going to uh, turn that over. Oh, no, first <laughs> I'm going to cut it out so I don't have quite as much paper on the edge of it. Now I'm going to turn it over and I just really smooth out that paper as good as I possibly can. And I also, at the same time, I'm kind of pushing down on the edges so I can see from this side uh, really clearly the edges of my pumpkin. This is my favorite way to kind of, if I'm going to use paper on wood, um, just to get it off the edges is to do this. I go through then, I love this little tool here. I got this on Amazon, it's a little sanding tool. I use it for so many things in my crafts and I will definitely link this in my description below so you can see where to get this little sanding tool. But I just go around and I sand that off um, and then I go around again and I take off. Those little edges were a little more difficult to get off. Um, not difficult, just a little more challenging to get off and have it look really clean. But I go through and I just sand this and then what I do is I take off the more rough sanding paper and I put like a 220 sanding paper onto my little tool and then I go back around again and it just smooths that out and just gives it a really nice clean smooth sanding around the edge of it. And now I'm taking Waverly ink and I'm going to go and I'm going to dry brush just around the edges of it just to kind of finish it off there to give it a more finished look. I've been doing so many Buffalo check uh, projects this year because I'm actually in the middle of transitioning my kitchen to um, buffalo check so I kind of started with the fall and I'm adding a ton of buffalo check projects so I've done a lot of them this year I'm just absolutely in love with buffalo check like the rest of the world I kind of fought it for a while but I just I, I just love it so it's so cute so here I am I'm just mod podging over that paper now just to kind of seal that it's in and you know I realized when I was editing this video that one of the pumpkins that I add to this project I cannot find the footage to me making the pumpkin anywhere um, it's the little green metal pumpkin that um, is on it and I got uh, the little green metal pumpkin um, at Dollar General so here I am, I just made this little stencil on my Cricut. It just says, welcome. And so I just, I used just removable vinyl for this and um, picked the font I liked and just made a really simple stencil and painted that orange. And so now I'm just gonna remove that, that it looks like it's harder to come off here, but it really was pretty easy to come off. Um, I've just removed that stencil and then I'll go back in and I'll take out the middles of all my letters, my L and my E and my O and just uh, clean out those middles. That's what I'm doing here. And then I'm just gonna get my other pumpkins. There's that green metal pumpkin I was talking about. I feel so bad that I can't find the footage to that. Basically what that was was a little metal yard stake that I got at Dollar General for a dollar and I just painted over it. It was orange and I just painted green, mod podged over it. I added a little um, jute rope to the stem. I just wrapped it all around the stem and glued it down as I wrapped it. And then I made a little sign that said fall out of one of those little small wooden tags from the Dollar Tree. I feel horrible that I didn't I can't find the footage for that, but you can see a good picture of it there. I just took the pole off of it, 
painted over that orange. See, you can see on the back it was just orange and I just painted over it and then added the jute and the little sign to it. Here I am. I had already put some E6000 glue on this and then I added some hot glue to it as well. And then I kind of realized there's like a little a little lip there because it's you know, it's it's glued on top of that buffalo check pumpkin and so it does leave a little lip there and what I end up doing is going in with one of those little towering blocks from uh, the Dollar Tree and I just glue one of them see there it is I just glue one of them under that lip just to make everything flush nicely so that was really easy I just kind of stuck that underneath there and then then everything was a little more flush And then here is where I go back in with that silver leaf that was on top of the big pumpkin. And I'm gonna glue that down and then I'm just gonna add that little raffia bow that was on the big pumpkin as well. And I'm just gonna glue that down. I like them much better on this little buffalo check pumpkin. For my next project, I got this little kind of shiplap looking pumpkin. I got this at Hobby Lobby. It was $9.99 and 40% off. So I paid, you know, like $6 for it. And here I am just using my heat gun just to get that little sticker off, make sure there's no sticky left on the pumpkin. And so for this pumpkin, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint each slat um, kind of a different color. Um, I used uh, an ivory and then an antique gold. The orange is called persimmon and that is a sage and then I don't remember what this one was called. I'm sorry. don't remember what that color was called. It's just like a dark kind of chocolate brown. And now I'm just going in here with my little flat brush. I love little flat brush paint brushes. They're my favorite. This paint brush, I think I have like four or five of these. I love them. I get them at um, Michael's and I can put that in the description box below as well but I love those little flat brushes so I'm just going in making sure on each slat that I get the sides and I'm just adding some of that antique gold now I'm going in with that sage color and adding my little green stripe this is a really really simple project uh, I would say this is a pretty easy beginner project here but I'm just gonna go in and give that I gave each slat two coats of paint um, just to make sure that I couldn't see too much too much of that wood coming through I'm going to uh, go through and kind of antique this up with some brown paint so it's okay if you could maybe see a little bit of the wood but um, I didn't want to see too much of it Now I'm just gonna go in with that persimmon orange. This persimmon orange paint has been my favorite paint to use uh, this year. I just, I love the, it's, it's like it's not too bright, but it's not super, you know, muted down brown. I just, it's been a really good orange for me. I, it works well in my family room where I have more, uh, I want to say kind of traditional colors, but a lot of green, orange, and yellow. Not a lot of like bright reds or bright oranges, um, but it's it's been a really good color for me this year. Now I'm just going into that uh, other slat there that's just with the ivory. And then for my last stripe, I'm gonna go in with that brown. I also use this brown to uh, paint my base as well and after I get this stripe done I go in and I uh, do that base with this brown as well I also take a little tiny brush and I go into all the slats that are kind of in between um, all those little like ridges in between those those like shiplap slats and I kind of put that paint down in between each of those as well and then here I am, I'm just going to get the edges really good, make sure I got the edges of each of my slats. I go back through and just make sure I 
got each of those with the correct color. And now I'm just going in and painting that slat on the bottom. I didn't realize my face was in so many of these video clips. I usually, I usually, I work full time still. And so I usually craft late at night is usually when I'm doing all of these things. And so I have all my makeup off and I'm, but hey, that's just me. That's when I craft. So you can see I went in and I just kind of antiqued with the brown um, just to kind of give it, you know, a little more rustic feel to it. And there I was just measuring because I'm going to make another stencil that I'm going to put um, in the middle of the pumpkin. So this part here, I'm starting at the top, which is a little different than I've done this before. And I'm using a little bit thicker uh, jute rope. And I'm just going to start at the top there. And I just lay it kind of over the top ridge. And then I'm going to start twisting it down and around that stem and just about on every loop I use a little bit of glue um, on the back and then I also put some on the front just to make sure that that stays tight and, and goes down really nice and flat and will stay down. So here I am, I'm getting to the bottom of that and I actually put a bunch of glue on the bottom and then went down and wrapped it. Um, and I just keep pressing that down to make sure it's just nice and flat and really, really uh, secure on that pumpkin. And then I just put a little bit of glue there at the end of the rope and just glue that in down really well. It's amazing what you can just take a little craft pumpkin like they sell at Hobby Lobby and there's so many different things that you can do with these and just they just turn out so cute. So here I am, I cut out my stencil on my Cricut and now I'm just going through and weeding it, taking out all the letters so I can turn that into a stencil. And you know, you don't have to use a stencil, you don't have to have a Cricut. There are so many cute sayings you can get at the Dollar Tree, sticker sayings that you can use. You could use some of those rub on letters. You know, I have a Cricut, so it's just convenient for me, but I, you know, I have noticed that there are so many different things at the Dollar Tree that you can use that just make just as cute a signs as my Cricut can make. So here I've just put that stencil down on my pumpkin, centered it, and now I'm just going over uh, with the Java from uh, the Folk Art Chalk Paint, and I'm coloring in that why do I keep saying coloring in? I'm painting in that stencil and I gave this two coats with that Java paint. One of the things I end up noticing when I take the stencil off is that I really wish my pumpkin had a little more, I wanted it to be a little more highlighted so you know it's painted and then you know adding all that antiquing kind of gives it like almost shadowing look to it but I wanted to highlight some of it um, so what I ended up doing um, is just using a little bit of that antique white that I used and a, again just a little tiny dry brush so see there I'm just dry brushing that antique off and I'm just gonna go in and kind of on some of those spots where it's um, just mostly the paint. Um, I'm just going over and I'm highlighting those. I just felt like highlighting it and I apologize that I got this so far out of the frame there. But you can see there, I'm just highlighting over where the paint is. I, I feel like highlighting it just gives it a little more dimension uh, to those slats. Doesn't make them look quite as flat. I love the way that highlighting looks when you use it on paint and really, it's so not difficult to do because you really take most of the paint off of your little stencil brush and then you're just kind of rubbing in that that highlight color and it doesn't have to be perfect 
you just want to give those parts where it's already you can kind of see where it's just a little lighter and you're just kind of accentuating those light spots I actually even went in on this project to my letters it had the Java on it and I just kind of went around on the kind of the fatter parts of my letters and I added a little highlighting to those as well I just feel like the more detail painting that you can give this um, and it's not difficult but the more detail painting you can give it I feel like the just more professional the the paint looks on there and here I'm just going in with a clear satin varnish that I got at Michaels and I'm just putting a little um, protectant over it it's uh, satin so it's not super shiny when it dries um, but I like I personally like a little satin varnish better than I do a matte varnish. I do use a matte on quite a few things, um, but I really prefer uh, the satin. And here I am just taking a couple of those little leaves from the Dollar Tree. Um, they just come in that little pack that has a bunch of different leaves. I really like the little burlap leaves that are in that pack, so I use those more than I use the little silk leaves. I really love the little burlap ones, but I'm just gonna glue down a couple leaves and then I just made a really simple bow out of that same thicker um, jute twine and I'm just gonna glue that to the top as well. And I just glue all of that down just with a little hot glue using my Sherbonder hot glue gun, which I love that hot glue gun. I can link that below as well. And I kind of wanted my ends to like be a little uh, curly. So I'm using just a paintbrush and I'm just wrapping those ends really tight. And I just kind of squeeze them in there. And it's amazing how this will stay. I mean, I did this project about a week ago and it still is very curly where I have it sitting in my house. I just like for those ends, not on all projects, but some projects I just like them to be a little curled up. And now I'm just uh, gluing in some little pine cones that I got. I got a huge bag of tiny pine cones from Michaels. The bag was $4.99 and it was 40% off, so I only paid a couple dollars and I'm gonna have those pine cones forever. So I just glued in a couple little pine cones just to give that a little, just a little more character. And now I'm just um, cutting off just a few of those little strings where some of those leaves got just a little frayed. And here is my final project. I love the way that this sign turned out. So here's my project number one. I ended up gluing a couple little um, of those uh, building blocks from the Dollar Tree onto the back of it. So it's kind of flush with the countertop. And this is what it looks like when it's standing. I love how this kind of says it says welcome fall with that little added tag I thought that this project turned out so cute and it looks so cute in my kitchen and then here this is um, I videoed this picture of this in the evening it's sitting on my piano next to my favorite little pump uh, not pumpkin my favorite little scarecrow there I've had him for several years um, but I just I loved the way that this little sign turned out so I hope you guys enjoyed my videos. If you did, please like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. And again, thank you so much to Unicorn Dust Designs and Crafted by Corey for hosting this challenge. See you soon.